Welcome to the Rachel Varga Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Varga, double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011 with over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures performed. I'm an international clinical trainer for other physicians and nurses as well, celebrity skin expert, having been featured on some of the world's top proactive aging podcasts and much, much more. Learn more at rachelvarga.ca and enjoy today's episode. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to today's episode on the Rachel Varga podcast. I'm really excited about today because as you know, I love blending the holistic science of beauty using my different rejuvenation methods for both at home and in the clinic and also biohacking and reducing our biological age and improving our cellular health. And in today's episode, we are going to discuss the future of skincare biohacking for beauty and warnings with self care products. And if you're new to the show here, welcome, I strongly recommend you kind of like stop what you're doing, save download this episode, listen to it on airplane mode, put your phone on airplane mode, turn off Bluetooth, and don't listen to this in a wire with wired headset, you want to reduce your EMFs and still safely consume content that will help you live your best life in the body, mind, spirit, and energy aspects of yourself. That's how you live high vibe. That's how you be radiant. That's how you be your best version. It's being your most clearest, most less interfered with version. Let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. We have Amitai Ishel, and he is an entrepreneur in the biohacking and beauty fields. He has held exclusive roles in the health, wellness, and beauty industry for over a decade, as well as being a business development consultant in that space. As co-founder and CEO of Young Goose, the biohacking skincare company, and the host of Young Goose's Biohacking Beauty podcast, Amitai has been making waves in his industry through education and innovation. Young Goose embodies his two passions – performance optimization and skin health. Hello, like totally my kind of person here. I'm looking forward to this one myself with products that boost the functions of natural rejuvenation processes in the skin. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Amitai Ishel, how are you today? Very good and very glad to to have this time to, to talk to you. I'm very excited. It's great to have you on the show. And just so you know, about 25% of the audience are gentlemen. I just finished wrapping up a lovely session with a gentleman from the UK and a follow up 30 minute follow up for one of my male clients just the other day as well. So guys want to look good too. you know, sometimes they got to look as good as their partners that are doing all this work to care for their skin also. But I love that you're combining biohacking and skin. So I would love for you to just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and the story of you and Young Goose and how you created the company. This story actually, uh, it starts in in, in biohacking as a whole, but less about uh, skin health. So um, I was a uh, head of recon for for an Israeli special operation uh, team. And um, basically, came out of the military with the ability to build, build teams, to, to build cooperation. And that was the, uh, the first steps that I took in, in the, um, let's say, the business realm. My good fortune brought me to, to deal with, uh, with uh, physical therapy, with cold lasers. And uh, that was kind of uh, the ro- route I took. That industry as a whole kind of shifted from in office, in uh, professional treatments when LEDs, as, as such as the one that you have behind you, uh, kind of shifted into a whole model. We, we, the company that I, that I was working with really took it upon themselves to uh, educate the, the, the wellness world, which now is kind of the biohacking world, about those aspects. By the by, I was interested in my own uh, you know, self-optimization. I was obsessed with martial arts and jujitsu and, and I uh, was looking to perform at the highest level I could. So I did different modalities, which today we're going to call biohacking modalities or health op- optimization modalities, such as NADIVs or cold plunges or intermittent fasting, um, many more things, actually. And uh, uh, I fell in love with that field, right? The field wasn't even called biohacking back then, but the idea that we can 
kind of capitalize on on how our body functions, kind of hijack mechanisms that would benefit us and kind of downregulate mechanisms that mechanisms that won't really spoke to me as 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 a creative person, as a person that that thinks outside of the box. And uh, I fell in love with that field. When we were trying to create a recovery cream um, with NAD, which which I loved, and with resveratrol, we failed uh, because the skin absorbed all of that cream. And that is how uh, the first product we we created for aesthetics uh, came about because the skin looked amazing. The body didn't really heal very well, but the, the skin looked amazing. So uh, we made the uh, lemonade out of, out of lemons. And uh, that was the first product. It, that product is today called Care. And the idea behind it is, you know, rebooting the uh, cellular function, uh, uh, rewinding cellular function to a younger state. And that's kind of what our company, that's the, the mission statement of the company. Uh, that was the first product today. We have many more, but that was kind of the story behind Young Goose. We uh, didn't plan on calling it Young Goose. We planned on calling the company Hormesis when we were uh, doing all our R&D, which took around five years. We trademarked the word Hormesis for, for aesthetics, uh, which now is synonymous with, with biohacking uh, because of David Sinclair, I think. But um, what we found out is that there is a company in, in supplement that's called the Hormesis. We didn't know who they are. We didn't know if they, they're going to do a good job. So we didn't want to keep, keep a name that we couldn't control the, the reputation. So we were looking for a very unique name. And uh, the office where we were working, our lab, had a pack of geese outside. And they looked amazing. You couldn't know their age, basically. that They could be bigger, smaller, whatever. But they all look amazing all the time. So that we kind of fell in love with the geese and, and obviously the, the connotation with young. And that's how the company was called Young Goose. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the story behind the brand, um, trying to inspire healthy living and longevity that eventually would benefit uh, our appearance or obviously our um, the way that we look. So you have quite a fascinating background. And as you have all heard me talk about on the show, a lot of skin rejuvenation health innovations actually come from the you know military or space spaces. And I see you nodding. Actually, I will just say this, that one of my favorite genres to read is actually espionage um, with some of the key characters in the Israeli intelligence. So I actually love learning like street craft, trade craft from that. So as a recon, a special operations person, I'm sure you'd kind of find that interesting. That's actually one of my favorite types of genres to read. Um, I am sure you'd be able to speak to some concerns over some biohacking technologies, utilizations, potential manipulations for different things. Um, I don't know if you're like comfortable talking about that, but that is kind of a, a feeling I just I have seeing some of the wearables that have changed so much. So what is and I, obviously I want to talk about skincare and how we can hack uh, our skin cells through skincare. But what's your take on biohacking at the moment? My take is that uh, we all love uh, definitions and, and kind of um, the, the, the sense of, of, of having a, a family or, or, or a movement to uh, rally around. And biohacking is no different. Uh, my worry, and, and we're seeing it in every industry, if you're going to go to... Um, I don't know what you have there in Canada, but here we have Costco. Or if you're going to go to any department store and you're going to see the amount of uh, BS that's called keto friendly, for example, you'd be, you know, that's, I think someone can make millions just by, by doing videos on how, how much not friendly some keto friendly things are. And that's an industry that we can kind of follow and see how it started as a grassroots movement. Same thing with paleo, same thing with many other movements and has morphed because of obviously the money that it generated morphed into something that can be used to trick us. And biohacking is prime, prime example as to how this can happen because it really encompasses anything, any kind of, I'm not going to use shortcut in a bad way, but any type of 
shortcut, any type of um, system that we can apply on ourselves, on our biology, in order to improve it. And a lot of the times, we actually don't know if that improvement is short term, what's going to happen in the long term. Uh, talking about, you know, called the low level lasers and, and red light therapy, um, you, you, I'm sure you're going to hear a lot of companies saying that there are no side effects, but um, there are actually, <laughs> if, if you go to a medical setting, there are, there is a, a three page list of, of counterindications that, that exist for that, whether it is types of antibiotics, photosensitizing agents. Um, obviously, if someone has some, some uh, tumors that they're dealing with that are sensitive to, to, to heat. So that's just one example out of many, many other ex uh, examples. You just gave the, 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 the recommendation not to listen to, the, to this podcast with uh, devices that emit EMF. And most of the wearables are based on Bluetooth. So if we have like 11 wearables uh, that were connected to full time, we're, we're starting to lose grasp with how much of a, how much of a good thing is, is actually good or, or bad for us. And when we talk about skin health, to be honest with you, I think bi skin health and biohacking is probably 50 years old. You know, I don't think the word biohacking uh, is is any marker like this, the 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 start of 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 using the word biohacking has nothing to do with how long we have been biohacking, um, obviously. And in skincare, it is glaring. For the last twenty years, we've seen you know microneedling and peels and lasers and things like that. But beforehand, we had other other modalities, whether it would be scrubs, whether it would be uh, electromagnetic. Uh, devices, galvanic devices, and, and we can go, again, 50 years backwards, we always have things that try to make our skin appear better um, and actually trick our cells to kind of renew themselves. The, 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 uh, the, the risk with that as a, as a whole, if we really take a, a kind of meta vi vision of that, is that our cells have like a reservoir they rely on to renew themselves. And if I want that my cells to renew themselves faster than they should biologically, I am de facto aging them. Okay, so if I did a, a bunch of uh, um, turnover inducing procedures, if I prick myself every day with micro needles and remove the top layer of my skin and then apply some retinol and uh, scrub my skin, assuming I didn't become a, a hot mess, um, what you would get are, are cells that have exhausted their, their stem cells, have exhausted their, um, their, the ends of their chromosomes, which, which are called telomeres. And basically what we can see, especially in the last 20 years, we can talk about why, but we can see people you know, in their 60s or that, that have done uh, treatments for 20 years, their skin is very, very, very thin. It is very fragile. And it and it tends to get um, to get damaged extremely quickly and recover very slowly. And um, you know those people when they go to a plastic surgeon, they don't want to deal with them anymore. Um, and, and specific technologies do it do it more than others, um, such as radio frequency, um, especially you know uh, you know fractional lasers. There are procedures that do it more than others. Um, and I consider those procedures biohacking. Uh, I consider any, any, anything that were going to affect how our body behaves biohacking. Um, as, as a, if we're looking at things in today's industry, one of the things that actually worry me the most is not necessarily biohacking, is um, the movement for like um, raw um completely clean products i hate the word clean because i heard actually someone pretty famous uh say <laughs> i'm not gonna put anything on my face that i wouldn't eat uh my friend that thing you said you're, you're gonna put on your face because you're gonna eat it is two years old uh i wouldn't eat anything that's two years old okay 
and so it's important to understand when we're when we're you know using our skincare where when we're making decisions understand how at least the basic understanding of how chemistry works and that we want the ingredients that we paid for. We want the ingredient that, that the box says that they have. We want them to be a bit available. We want them to be stable. Uh, so actually the uh, the whole clean movement really worries me because we can see actually a lot of reactions from, from these products. We can see a lot of damage being created, chemical burns being created from, from these products because um, chemicals change over time and some of them do not react that well. And in the, that industry, at least here in North America, is a real free for all. Okay, you can you can you, you see every celebrity under the sun create a skincare brand, and that's we only know about it because they're celebrities. They're the same amount of percentage in the population that decided decided that they want to create a skincare brand in, in their garage or whatever. No offense to anyone. I have a dear friend who's a doctor that makes her own products in in her kitchen, and and she's great, but she's she's no no chemist, okay? Um, so in general, we need to be careful to, to make sure that what we're putting on our face is is the right ingredients, not only not only for our skin, that, that they're the right ingredients in general. Are you um, by chance reading my mind? Because as I'm making some notes here, uh, yeah, I talked to, I, I jotted down celebrity skincare I'm assuming that when you see celebrity skincare lines pop up, I'm finally meeting someone who it probably bothers them just as much as I do. So <laughs> thanks for mentioning that. And also when you and I probably spot the biohacking and skincare gimmicks, it's just like something inside us just cringes because we know that people are being lured into buying these products that are probably going to make them sick. They're going to go into the drawer where products go to die and then they're just going to end up in the bin and in the landfill. So I def I really, really love where you're coming from. And when you mentioned lasers, I have since 2011 gotten my hands on some of the quote unquote best lasers out there. And actually in the med spa settings, lasers carry the highest rates of litigation and side effects because of the varying qualities of devices, uh, non-regulated healthcare practitioners using them. So yeah, I'll echo that. I'll also echo that some skin laser fractionated treatments just destroy the skin. I know exactly what you're talking about with that thin eggshell white type look. And especially when certain lasers are applied to the skin and they, they you know, integrate well, quote unquote, well, with the skin uh, on flat areas of the face, but then they don't provide an effect on highly contoured areas. Of the, I've seen this in my clients is like the skin on their forehead and cheeks looks like they're, they look like a ghost. Their skin is so thin and fragile looking. And then up close, the between the brows and the nose and, um, you know, the mid cheek, the laser, the device couldn't contact the skin and provide the energy there. So then you're left with these like weird areas of the face that look glassy, smooth, no pores, and then large pores. It looks really strange. We call that like demarcation. So I'm really glad you mentioned that you're aware of that. Not all lasers are created equally. That's where the one-on-one -on -one session comes in. So I can actually guide you towards technologies that have stood the test of time and that actually do create beautiful um, collagen and a beautiful outcome. So just because you hear lasers isn't doesn't mean it's good. And yes, what you said about clean, I do have a background in Gen Chem, Organic Chem, Biochem. So when I hear the marketing terms, clean or green or all natural it just like it's a marketing ploy it means absolutely nothing 100 percent. my clients that have had uh they come to meet with me for a one-on-one -on -one session here take my skin camps and and they say you know i have red sensitive skin i've been told i have rosacea and then they let me know what their skincare routine is they're not washing their face they got oxidative stressors happening they're using um like oftentimes all organic oil-based products as well that aren't stable the oils are probably rancid itself it's just across the board not cleansing using these like hippy dippy oil-based all organic products now some of them i've actually i've actually been able to find a couple products from certain lines this is what i do i bring my clients the best of the best but i basically love everything you're saying and i'd love for you to expand on some things i just mentioned there first of all you you're 
Yeah, and, and again, we have a, a back and forth mind reading over here because first of all, what I did want to kind of kind of say that whether it is the, the professional such as yourself that is giving the consultation or the, the brand, they and it's very difficult to, to find people like that. They need to care about the end user. They need to care about the person that is in front of them. Obviously, a skincare brand is not going to have a physical person in front of them, but that end user. And when I mean by care, most companies, especially if they're too large or if the organization is too large, what you're going to get are people that are beholden to create results right now. What they need to do is to generate the most amount of money right now. And that is, you know, what what we say in the military is that the the opposite of of um, of creativity is fear. And when we are afraid to, you know, to um, basically when we're afraid to um, create a relation, a long-term relationship, when we're afraid that this client is, is going to go somewhere else, when we are, we don't want to give our all to that client, when we don't feel like they're a member of our family and we should treat them as such, what we're going to get is a disingenuous kind of marketing or, or, or a way to draw money out of that that person, right? So that can be with, you know, too many procedures, the wrong procedures, procedures that are that that maybe is what the client wants, quote unquote, but they only want it because they've heard about it on YouTube or from their friend that is obviously um, not a professional. Um, and the same thing with 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 the skincare brands, obviously. It doesn't only matter what you're putting on in inside the bottle. It matters how you treat that bottle, where it is stored. You know, how do you move it around from place to place? Obviously, we are again, we're in North America. I mean, if a product is made in in um, Toronto or in Miami and it's shipped to uh, Washington State, that's a long way. Uh, that's a long way to go. Uh, it, it needs to be shipped in 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 a in a sustainable way uh, in order to get to get the product to you in the way that you want it. So in general, caring and, and feeling like you're, you're taking care of someone's health is the, uh, is the bottom line. And that includes you as a, as a professional, a company, the truck driver, whoever. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that uh, because I've been contacted a number of times from these fulfillment companies, but the big problem with a lot of these fulfillment places, you're nodding your head. It's like when you buy stuff on Amazon, you never know like how that product is being kept. Is it being kept at ambient temperature? How fresh is it? So I love that you are aware of this stuff as well. When we talk about the in clinic and, you know, the biohacking stuff, this is really interesting. So before I would do about, you know, 60% in clinic staff, 40% at home, like literally, you know, a little bit more of an emphasis on the in clinic lasers and other rejuvenation options too. And then I started biohacking. And then I got a couple car accidents and realized that, hey, I don't think my body can handle some of these lasers and some of these injectables anymore. They're just going to fill up my toxic bucket and tip me over the edge for what my body and inflammatory levels can handle when I'm already dealing with pain, started to track my HRV and noticed certain rejuvenation options were actually lowering my HRV that I could previously tolerate. But now, because I'm so much more, I guess, pure of a vessel with my body, my spirit energy, I'm actually more sensitive, which is very ironic. So I've gone, gone from that 60-40 to now 90% lifestyle, home care, biohacking to, I would even go so far as to say less than 10% in clinic stuff. So I 100% feel like the future of skin rejuvenation, longevity lies with biohacking. And is biohacking... For beauty, the new way of skin and body rejuvenation instead of the previous model of just in clinic interventions, I say yes. I I feel like we're seeing this whole parallel system of people caring for their health, their wellness, their biohackers, and as a byproduct, they're getting the best hair, skin, nails, 
of their life. Their skin is looking less inflamed. They're looking more vibrant. They have more uh, cognitive clarity and, and positive interactions with their people, places, and things. I was at Upgrade Lab not too long ago. It's like fabulous in this adorable lace tweed skirt suit, high heels, chilling in the cell trainer. And I was thinking to myself, people are doing this all wrong. They're doing the skincare and rejuvenation. They need to be biohacking. And then you know, stabilize their air quality, their lighting, their EMFs or electromagnetics in their skin, then do the stuff because they're actually going to respond better because their toxic bucket won't be as filled up. Actually, I've actually, I even have a paper um, being published this year, this month in a UK journal on my rejuvenation algorithms. But I'd love for you to talk about this biohacking is the new beauty and all that stuff. You're you're hitting the nail on the head, but I think uh, obviously we're looking at it a little bit differently because uh, as the company that strives to provide that day to day routine, um, we obviously would love to, to to not ruffle any feathers, right? We we would love to say you could still do whatever you want to do. But you should use us every day. So I'll tell you how we are we approach it. First of all, when you're doing an aesthetic procedure in office, you're giving the body homework. You're never. It's not. You're, it's not sewing a, a piece of piece of clothing. Okay, it's uh, it's basically creating a demand for something that the body needs to do, and then the body does it. And we can look at the the preparation or the recovery actually in two ways. Most of the recovery happens before the procedure. I know it sounds weird, but most of the recovery is maintaining our body in a state in which it can react to whatever we done we, have, we did in office in the most effective way obviously we all know people who go to the gym and do not get results we all know that and i'm sure if i was talking about the gym because it is such a uh, popular subject you could give me the answer and anyone else will give me the answer intuitively oh they're probably not eating well sleeping supplementing they're probably under a lot of stress and, you know, fill in the blank. So what's going on there? Their body is not, you know, responding to the homework. We grow, you know, in, in sports, we say we grow when we sleep. We don't grow when we train. Actually, if you think about it, you train way less hours during the day than you do the other things, right? And the same thing goes for, for the way we look. We don't age we the, the aging is not a linear process okay what happened is we uh live our lives and we don't actually age that much and then there is a stressful event and it can happen because we missed a a, a night of, uh, of good sleep it can happen because uh you know maybe something more severe happened uh it can happen because we had covid obviously we know a lot of people that that look much older after covid we lost weight whatever that may be so that event is what we're kind of preparing for every day when we're biohacking our health, when we're optimizing our health, we kind of don't know when it's going to happen. Um, and that is where we, the, our, the, that's, the, uh, that's the, the day of reckoning. And, but we can choose when that re day of reckoning is. Actually what biohacking is, is choosing your stressors in a way that they, they uh, serve you instead of harm you, if you would. And actually that has a lot, um, there, there, it's, it looks different chemically in your brain when you choose the, your stressors than when you're exposed to stressors involuntarily. There, there are different brain functions for either of the two. So when we choose our stressors, whether it would be the lasers that, that we spoke about before, whether it's retinol that we do every couple of days, whether it, whatever it is, whether it's a surgery, okay? We choose that stressor, and then the second part of, of the recovery begins. The, re, the kind of optimization of recovery itself, how much blood is coming to that area, you know, reduction of toxins, um, again, supplementation, because the body is building itself now. So we want to give it the good build, building blocks to do that. And we can talk about specific modalities, but I think that looking at every day, like we're getting ready for, for you know, for a work, kind of for a rainy day is not only the way that we should probably manage our finances, always, you know, keep something for a rainy day. That's kind of how we should manage our, you know, health finances uh, or health bank account, 
if you would. So what we want to do is 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 kind of optimize our cells every day, make sure they perform well every day. It's much easier to perform well when it when it's a habit. If you build a good habit, that would take you a long way. So even if you don't feel like, uh, oh, you know, I'm I'm going to do a surgery in like three years, whatever. I'm gonna I have a long time to go until I'm going to do anything. Building a habit. Uh, for three years would make it much easier. And obviously, you're also going to look better better in those three years. As for biohacking as a way of life, I think most of what we think of as biohacking has a different name now or had a different name five years ago. And it's something that we would consider a healthy way to live our life anyway. Maybe now the biohacking trend or realm, um, I don't like the word trend, so the biohacking modality would just include more technology. Not because that's what biohacking is. That's just because the world is advancing in that direction. And we can use technology in a more accurate way to affect our biology and to quantify our biology, right? To kind of make sure that what we're doing works, whether whether it is measuring different uh, things in our blood with continuous glucose monitoring, whether it's a a aura ring or a whoop strap that can measure how we sleep. So we can quantify how, or, you know, you mentioned HRV, heart rate variability, which I call also heart intelligence. How well can our heart kind of manage different things that, that happen when it moves blood around? Uh, so all of those things can be measured and they can give us a good, you know, kind of good read of, of how well we perform the tasks uh, or, or perform the uh, maintenance on our body that we want to perform. Oh, so well said. We are like two peas in a pod. I'm really like, I don't know if those of you tuning in are enjoying this as much as I am, but I'm just like, wow, cannot wait to continue to collaborate with you. Yeah. I loved what you said about uh, we train less than we sleep and live. And the same thing goes with when you're doing your skincare routine, you're cleansing, moisturizing, sunscreen, scrub, rolling, using your retinols, things like that. That time spent doing that is like 2% of your day. And so I, I love that because I've never actually thought about it like that, but you're 100% right. That's why I guess subconsciously I've been you know preaching from the mountaintops here, clarify your air, water, lighting, EMF, uh, the, the running joke in Florida, that's where you are, is that I'll fry my face in the sun and then I'll just get a facelift. No, you do not want to care for your body and your skin like that, that you'll just pay somebody to cut out the extra skin, pay somebody show up, work their magic. No, you have to take charge over what you do every single day and make good choices in life. Um, and I really like what you said about technology. And I'll add to that. I like using technology to modulate my environment and reduce my toxic exposure. I cannot stand it when I have to go into big box stores, which I avoid like the plague, but I had to with my mom the other day, terrible lighting, everything was off gassing. I was looking at the people working in the store. They all had red inflamed skin. Their eyes looked puffy. They looked like they were having hair loss, but you know, us biohackers, we can't like live in our biohacked home and office. We do have to go in the world and interact act and all this stuff live our lives but uh, that's why I like biohacking is to help modulate the toxins that I'm exposed to so that my toxic bucket is kept nice and empty would you say that for the most part beauty is is a motivator for longevity you know people want to live long but sometimes they don't want to live long because they feel like their body's going to fall apart or they're going to have fine lines wrinkles and they, they want to look good they want to feel good feel good look good all this stuff so in your opinion is beauty a motivator for longevity the short answer is yes but that's kind of our evil plan to be honest with you we have a podcast called biohacking beauty very little is uh, actually <laughs> is actually um, revolves around beauty because obviously kind of what we're saying is, oh, we have the best products. We'll take care of your skin, but our products are not going to work very well if, uh, if you're not going to do other things that are going to facilitate that. So why is it? So our evil plan is, is kind of make, motivate people to take care of their health through promising them better results on their, uh, you know, in their, in their 
in their beauty journey. And what we, you know, what is very funny about that, I, I say that every, everyone's ego is parked somewhere else. Uh, my ego is parked in athletic performance. You know, if I had a bad day, uh, you know, sparring in jujitsu, or if I had a, uh, you know, if my, 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 if I have some kind of injury, I, <laughs> it's a very, it's, it's, it's not a good day for me. Okay. That's where my ego is parked. That's what I, you know, that's how I'm going to tell myself, oh, I'm an old man or whatever. If a 20 year old, you know, rolls with me and, 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 you know, beats me, that's where, that's where my ego parked. And, you know, fortunately or unfortunately for me specifically, it's not in how my skin looks. Now it is because I have a skincare brand, but it's not like that innately. But I understand that this is as vain as someone else that is only that cares only about their skin. There is actually vanity is, is misleading because we are all vain in exactly the same you know, levels. It just maybe is dispersed differently. Vanity just means that our ego is connected to something and that affects how we feel about ourselves. That's it. And for the majority of the people, their, their ego is at least partially parked in the way they look. You know, the first thing we kind of we kind of spoke about briefly was that you have quite a large male following. And right now, male, you know, males are starting to maybe consider the, their skin health as part of as part of what they need to care about. But Come on, one of the best industries to get into is hair transplants, right? Like it's, it's. Uh, I mean, males care about the way they present themselves as much as females. It's just kind of maybe expresses itself slightly differently. Uh, obviously, if it's male or female, if they lose their hair, there is something that there is a pinch to the ego, right? That it's not it's not something that we we associate with with healthy living or with vitality or, or longevity, we all want to feel as a, as a viable member of society. We have um, heads of companies, doctors, lawyers that buy our products and, and kind of in, in different meetups, conferences, whatever that is, we get to talk to them. They all don't want the person in front of them thinking that they're an old uh, over the hill you know, person that cannot perform to their highest ability anymore. And that is, that's how we, we kind of connect the, a high performance of your skin with overall high, healthy performance of your body. We're telling you, if you're not going to manage your, your stress levels, you're going to be like every U S president ever after eight years in office or four years in office, right? You're going to look 20, 30 years older. Um, if you're not going to manage sleep the same way, no one can perform well, you know, mentally after they sleep well. your skin cannot perform very well after you don't sleep well. And that's going to express itself if it accumulates and so on and so on and so on. If we don't move our bodies, we're not going to have good lymphatic drainage. We're not going to have good blood circulation and our skin's going to suffer. Uh, and obviously our body's not going to look optimal as well, which is part of, of, of our appearance. Um, if we're not going to supplement on good, if we're not going to eat healthy, and some of it is supplementation, the, our cells can only build themselves with what we give them. They can, and the sun, okay? They cannot build themselves from what we read on Google. So, or the, the advices we give other people and then go and eat McDonald's, okay? So uh, whatever building blocks we consume, that's what our cells will build basically be built out of and the better we eat the better supplements we take the better our cells are going to uh, build themselves and obviously the better we are going to look don't forget that in seven years we are a completely different person right every cell in our body has rebuilt itself so whatever you're going to you know feed yourself from today instead you know until seven years from now that is literally what you're going to be made of Absolutely. Um, quick question. Do you have a hard stop in a few minutes? Uh, no. Okay, perfect. Because <laughs> there's so much that I want to 
continue to dive in here. So I just wanted to respect your time there. Um, a lot of my clients are like, oh, looking after my skin and beauty and all that stuff. It's kind of vain. I feel vain doing it. A lot of clients that are in, uh, you know, they're spiritual, they kind of grapple with this. I've done a past episode on that on the show. Um, you should definitely check out that episode on the Rachel Varga podcast. But just a newsflash here, the skin is the largest organ of your body. It's also the largest detoxification organ of your body. So you better start looking after your skin and reframe that program that you've been led to believe that it is vain. Amen to hair growth and a scalp stimulating products. Uh, yeah, I had actually started to experience about two years ago, some initial signs of hair loss in my edges, and I was just not having any of it. So I went down this uh, rabbit hole of actually caring for my hair, like my hair is the best it's ever been, less heat styling, looking after my hair as carefully as I do my skin with actually my AM, PM routine. Uh, 100%, the gents, the ladies, we don't like to look tired. So looking after ourselves to keep the collagen lesson that we have, live healthy lifestyles to also maintain that. I do want to talk about your skincare uh, brand in just a sec here. But stress levels are really, really important too. So I actually, you know, I was on that jet set lifestyle and had done all the media training in New York. I was, you know, set to be on big shows and teach in London and fly here and there and everywhere. And then, you know, the life got, or the world got turned upside down. It's like, hey, I kind of like this chill lifestyle, working from home, having slow mornings, getting in my yoga and grounding and you know, relaxing into my morning coffee and collagen and just kind of slowing things down a bit, reducing that need to have that busy badge of honor. Uh, I love what you said also about companies that get so big or the bottom line is always the dollar as opposed to the individual humans outcome. These are humans we're selling products to not just, you know, accounts. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't want to get too big. Heck I deleted my Instagram in March because you know, I'm not for everybody, nor do I want to work for and with everybody as well. So I just want to add to that. I would love for you to talk to us about your skincare brand, young goose, the science of it, and also some of the nuances that kind of sets your skincare uh, line apart. Now, full disclaimer, I haven't had a chance to try the products yet, but I will be and I'll be reporting back. I'm really excited. I always love finding new uh, products to recommend to my clients. I'm always on the hunt for the best of the best and, and to then uh, offer them and recommend them. But how can we make ourselves behave in a more youthful state? And what is the science behind your your skincare to help the cells optimized, uh, help optimize cellular functioning to hold more water for hydration levels, create more collagen, open up cellular signaling pathways, and even heck support the mitochondria of the skin cells themselves. So how are you doing that with your skincare company? So it's funny when you started, you know, you started your question. I had one thing that I, I wanted to, the, one way that I wanted to answer it. And, and when you, you ended up so, so, well, it's so profoundly that I, I actually want to explain it a little bit differently. But again, we are this, the self-proclaimed world's first biohacking skincare company. So first, why? why? What, what, what does it even mean? Normally, if you go to any website, just, you know, if you, if, you, if you can, when this podcast is over, make sure you test me on that. Just go to any, your favorite website for, for a skincare company or whatever that is. And you are going to see the way that that skincare company communicates. And what you're going to see is the sentences, sentences like uh, improves or helps improve the appearance of fill in the blank, okay? Which is very noncommittal, right? Um, why is that? Because that is what we call a downstream effect, Okay. If someone is 90 years old and I wanted to, you know, make them younger, you, you know, if I wanted them to feel younger and I just Botox their forehead, they will not feel younger. They might feel not younger if they locked, looked in the mirror, but they obviously are not going to feel younger when they rocked out of their chair, right? We need to do other things in order for them to do that. We need to climb up what we call the 
the, the stream of aging. The more upstream a process is, is the more it affects different, different aspects of aging. So, for example, a wrinkle obviously is something that is being affected by the levels of collagen your skin can produce. Okay, if I give your skin collagen, if I give your body collagen, it, you, you mentioned uh, putting collagen in your coffee. If I give your body collagen, your body then actually need to utilize that collagen. And the, the, the older we are, the less well we do that. So our job as a biohacking skincare company is to find upstream processes that we can affect so we can make your skin look better, not only today, not only tomorrow, but in 10, 20 years and, and more, right? Because the whole idea of biohacking is that we're going to live until 120 years old, so we need to look good also then. But that is our mission statement, making your cells behave younger, make, rebooting your cells to a youthful state, and that would make sure that you look the best that you can look. And the way that we do it is by influencing longevity pathways. What does it mean? We influence the information your, your cells have as to what it means to behave. Uh, we, have, we all have a DNA. That's our, our recipe for how we should function. And when we grow older, this recipe gets jumbled. Our cells cannot read it very well, and then they can't create collagen very well. They can't create pigment very well, and, the, and pigment basically, you, you get pigmentation. The skin becomes lax, uh, and, and every other sign of aging that you can imagine. What we're doing is we started working with molecules that are very well known in the longevity realm or the regenerative realm that you're going to see in 10, 20 years, and we're using them today in order to affect your skin. One of them, obviously, a very famous one is called NAD or NAD, some people call it. Um, and that is basically fuel for every repair process in the body. It lowers with age. And we have a we use a patented formula to raise that those levels in your skin. We activate sirtuins, which are your anti-aging genes or longevity genes. We activate detoxification pathways that are called NRF2 or NERF2 another pathway, it's called AMPK. So basically we're climbing, climbing up to the, to the, where water start to flow, right? To up, up, upstream, we create better processes there. And then your skin functions better, looks better for years to come and doesn't only appear better, but actually is aging in the background. Absolutely. It really truly is about simply giving your skin cells and your body, mind, spirit, and energy in general, all those aspects, what they want, right? And less of the stuff that they don't want. So becoming hyper-focused with ingredients and agents, antioxidants, peptides, humectants, growth factors, NAD to support healthy skin cell function. That's like the dream. That's the skincare. That's the, you know, rejuvenation dream as opposed to, oh, this product, you know, 29 people said that they reported uh, smoother skin after 28 days. Yeah, we've all seen those ads. I know we just you and I am sure when we go through magazines or product websites, we get a pretty clear sense of just how heavy the line is in the science versus how heavy they are. They are in uh, the promise of a lifestyle. Uh, enhancement just magically by spending this much money on a product and having it on your counter and sharing it on social media and stuff like that. So I have a, a, a question for you. With a background in martial arts, and we both do uh, jujitsu, I have for 10 plus years of kickboxing, thanks to my hubby for showing me the ropes, no pun intended. But with your background in martial arts and in the recon special operations world, uh, yes, I have some fam jam in the military and all that stuff too. What are actually my husband, not my husband, one of my uncles, he was involved in like the Cold War and all this cool stuff. And now he's writing a book very loosely wow. based on events. And he did put me in as a character, although it's, uh, he's kind of played with my character a little bit, dr driving like this really girly car, but I drive like a super masculine Land Rover 4x4. <laughs> I'm like, you got to change that vehicle. That's not quite right. Uh, jokes aside. 
uh, it'll be a good one. I'll, I'll share that book with you. But what are your secrets to maintain and optimize your life force? Which martial artists are typically very good at? Thanks to the research by Dr. Beverly Rubick. Uh, if you haven't heard of Dr. Beverly, do you know who she is? Yeah, she is just like next level out of this world. And using the BioWell, which is the device I have, uh, actually measures the energy coming off of your fingertips. And one of my um, brother-in-law, he also does uh, kickboxing and stuff, as well as my, my husband. Uh, they have amazing body jewel output and all sorts of wonderful um, nuanced metrics that obviously we're, we don't have time to get into the show here using this um, extrapolated technology. It's just crazy what we can see. But how do you optimize your life force, maintain it, you know, get more of it, direct it? How do you do that in your personal life and your professional life? Uh, well, I have, so obviously we're all uh, light beings. We all are made out of light. We all made out of energy. And um, the, as we said before, one of the, the major things that biohacking allows us is really to measure different things and, and see if what we're doing is congruent with, with, with the way that we live our lives and the way that we, the results that we want. But as far as what martial arts or the military or whatever high, highly demanding discipline anyone else is going to engage in, one of the things that it requires you is to learn how you deal with uncertainty. Um, which obviously leads us to, to talk about stress. So knowing that uncertainty is something that is a hindrance, is something that most people, you know, maybe they've experienced at some, some level, but obviously if, you're, if you don't know if you're going to get shot or not, or if you don't know uh, who your opponent is and what they're capable of, it, it, it does express itself a little bit differently. And the stress that is involved is something that you really need to know how to deal with. The high level athletes, um, you know, we all know in, in our community, we all know people who are what we call gym champions, right? In the gym, they are literally beating everyone's, but everyone, everyone that you would know from TV or anything like that. There are people that beat their butt, but these people cannot handle the stressors of being under the spotlight or whatever that is. Um, what I'm trying to lead to is handling stress, being able to uh, operate under stress or being able to operate under uh, situations where uncertainty is a big factor um, can be measured. We can measure these people have a different, ha have different levels of cortisol of epine or, or epinephrine, which, which is adrenaline, but also have different responses to high level of those. And again, the fourth thing that I want to say is, is that they trick their mind to think that they chose to be exposed to those high levels, which leads to a completely different function of the body. So by learning how to deal with stress and learning also strategies that help me deal with stress, for example, biohacking strategies, like mindfulness, like uh, a beautiful tool that I love that's called, that's called uh, BrainTap. Um, these, these tools allow me to eventually lower the impact that a high stressful job that I'm involved with right now as well has on the way that my cells function and obviously the way that they maintain themselves, which in, is correlated with aging. Um, which is, I believe, sleep and stress management are the two most important tenets as far as longevity. What's your favorite biohack? If you could pick one, this is like an impossible question to actually ask a true biohacker, but if you could pick one, what would it be? Um, I'll give you, I'll give you two because I'll give you one that's extremely low tech and the one that, that, that isn't. Um, the one that's extremely low tech is uh, omega threes. Uh, I believe omega threes is is uh, probably one of the least utilized modalities for um, for longevity as a whole, for optimal performance. Um, do your research. There, there. Do your research. Get good omega threes. 
you can get blood work for omega-3s, uh, uh, what we call the omega-3 index that you do, uh, either from blood plasma, but way better from red blood cells. Um, it should be over 6%, uh, preferably over 8%. The average in the end says, I think it's 4%. Um, that's number one. That's for as, as a low tech, something that someone can do tomorrow. As far as something that's a little bit more high tech uh, is a cold plunge or, or, or deliberate cold exposure. Um, I believe that also teaches us how to deal with stress. It has amazing anti-aging benefits. You can, it's something that can benefit you as an individual as far as your mood for that day. I think it's a, it's a, an amazing tool that we're getting away from, especially here where I live in Miami, where you can choose not to be cold any day of the year. You know, cold is not a must here in Miami. And um, being cold is something that us humans have to get if we want to if we want to uh, optimize our body. So uh, deliberate cold exposure would be probably my favorite biohack as far as technology goes, like going in an ice bath, etc. Yeah, I love cold exposure. That's really what I leaned into when I was dealing with a lot of pain. Hundred um, percent. I took a boatload of omega was eating it just a ton of raw salmon as well not so good when you're you know eating salmon in the woods and you know there's bears nearby that's a whole other that's a whole other story behind the scenes but getting into like low tech free stuff grounding getting into nature barefoot on the ground but you can ground and do your cold therapy at the same time if you live in the pacific northwest here in canada the ocean is perfect temperature for cold therapy all year round and you can even get in some sun gazing for your circadian rhythm i'll sometimes light a fire next to you you know if i do cold therapy in the tub or i'll just watch the sunset high tech atmospheric cell trainer i love stressing shrinking expanding my cells my hrv just goes through the roof every time i do that type of uh, biohacking at Upgrade Labs. It has been an absolute pleasure having you here on the show, Amitai Eschel. It's been an absolute pleasure. I cannot wait to have you back on the show. And uh, for any of you interested in the Young Goose skincare line, check out the link in the description of this episode for special savings and all of that. And I will be uh, connecting again with Amitai on, you know, my feedback, which ones I really like in the line. I, I'm really excited to check out uh, a new line here, especially product line with the focus on biohacking. I think we need more of this. I think we need less of the, oh, it's just going to be pretty fine lines, wrinkles, you know, brown spots and sunspots and all this. I was like, no, we need to get to the root cause of supporting our skin cells and our overall cellular health in general for true beauty in biohacking. Thank you so yeah. much for being on the show. Do you have any closing words? I mean, that was, that was a wonderful uh, discussion. I think uh, I, I found uh, someone that, that speaks my language. Uh, obviously, looking good, it, our skin is an organ. You know, it's, it's very funny to me, but no one has ever developed an obsession with their pancreas as much as they developed a, an obsession with their skin. Uh, but it is a, an organ. It is intertwined with the function of every other organ that we have. If we take care of our body, if we take care of our liver, our, our digestive tract, you know, muscles, brain, whatever that is, that is going to manifest itself in our skin, in our skin, in our, the way that our skin look, looks. And by the way, research shows that, that the, our biological age does correlate with the way that we look and our, the, the appearance of, of our age. Um, so I encourage everyone to take it maybe as a sign that from now on, you need to uh, take care of your general health for for a better, uh, better looking skin. And obviously, we would love to direct you in the right direction, uh, other, either by using our products. You can definitely uh, tune into our podcast, which Rachel is going to be on, uh, which is called Biohacking Beauty. And uh, it was it was a pleasure being here. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, just incredible to um, host a podcast, just the amazing people and healers and teachers and humans that are just on this deaf, this different wavelength that when you find people that you resonate with, and you're kind of at that same level, it's just like, whoo, magic, alchemical communications and insights just coming left, right and center. So this is a lot of fun for me to record. Cannot wait to be on your show as well. 
and have an amazing rest of your day, everybody. If you have any questions from today's episode, I encourage you to email me directly, info at rachelvarga.ca, and many, many wonderful ways I can support you, your at-home, your in-clinic journey, direct you to keep you on the straight and narrow, to avoid skin toxins, which are just, you know, everywhere in the space. And um, Emma Ty and I, I'm assuming you sleep just as well as I do in the way that we are hoping to make a difference in the world through beauty and biohacking. Have an amazing rest of your day, everybody. And we'll see you back here again on the Rachel Varga podcast.